day. Welcome to Music Motors. Welcome to the Caterham 270S. Now the 270S is powered by a 1.6 litre Ford motor, produces 135 brake horsepower, 165 uh, newton metres of torque, gets to 60 miles an hour in about five seconds, tops out about 122. Now the base prices behind these are about 28,000 pounds. Now that's not built and that's with no options. If you want it built, you want a wider chassis, you want buffalo leather, you want the weather pack, you want road suspension, all sorts of stuff like that, you're creeping up more towards 38,000 pounds. But that's on the road, built 38,000 pounds. Now I believe that the, the 270S is the best everyday Caterham because with 135 brake horsepower it comes in at about 250 brake horsepower per tonne which is enough to have fun but not enough to kill you in the wet. So in this episode of Music Motors I'm going to show you why the Caterham 270S is the best daily Caterham money can buy. Now, from the outside, Caterhams over the years haven't really changed. They've had a traditional look and they've stuck with it. Now, it's, a, it's quite a charismatic look, the front end quite bug-eyed, but defined the kind of old school, let's say early 19th century kind of design. Uh, the sides haven't really been changed. The back end, the only change really is the brighter, almost LED lights, but they're not quite there. I still feel to this day, that it looks like they've just put some trailer lights on the back of the car. However, it's not a bad look. It makes sure that people know it's not a mass-produced vehicle. This looks like a one-off. And while it, while you will see others about, but not on a regular basis, it definitely isn't a one-off, which is a good thing because there's loads of parts to modify and adapt it and to ensure that if anything breaks, that you've got a brilliant supply of things to fix it. Continuing on the outside, this one's finished in golf blue, a fantastically, it's a very light blue colour which for a small vehicle like this is quite essential so people can see you. Uh, the headlights, nice, nice kind of chrome surrounds going on. Uh, I did think that the headlights were going to be rubbish but they actually turned out to be rather good. The alloy wheels, not my favourite design, uh, my favourite design were the ones that I had on the 360R, my first Caterham. Uh, but this design is the same design I've had on the 420R. They are very nice, they do hold the road extraordinarily well and considering how big they are, they actually offer a reasonably comfortable ride. Reasonable in caterham terms. In that it's not going to break your back but you are going to feel potholes and small things that you wouldn't in normal cars. Aside from that though, on the outside it is just a lovely finished, a lovely looking vehicle. A finish in the Golf Blue with the stripe from the outside point of view, Caterhams always look amazing. And the plus point I will add to having a Caterham as a daily is that you can park it almost anywhere you want because of how it looks. People are just fine with you leaving it outside places. In fact, one of the gigs that I did this weekend, everyone was told to move their car except me. So here's a question for you. Can you daily a Caterham? To demonstrate and to find out I have a hectic two days covering hundreds of miles and even though the weather's not great I'm going to spend as much of it as possible with the roof off. Um, I'll be figuring out fuel economy, I'll be talking about comfort and low capability because thus far, although I now can't take a passenger, everything fits in. So let's get going, but first stop, fuel. <laughs> First hour of driving down, it's pretty comfortable. I've not really seen the fuel needle move much at all. The only thing that does get a little bit full on is the exhaust being right next to your ear. So I suppose the first criticism is that if you were gonna daily one of these, you would want the rear port exhaust, which I've seen on a few models instead of there. Otherwise you're wearing it. Like aside from that though, it's comfortable, pretty warm, visibility is good, and I'm sticking at about 65 miles an hour just because it's, it's cozy and it's easy. The M25 back there is quite unforgiving though. In any vehicle, it's terrible, but this feels it a little bit more than most. And that's an 
arrival. I will bring you along for the rest of the day, show the gig off and all that types of stuff. But summary, pretty comfortable. I put in my earplugs in for the last bit just because obviously having the exhaust air gets a bit loud. It's quite easy to drive and even in traffic, it doesn't feel like what it is. It doesn't feel like a track car. It feels like a normal car. It's just a bit more back to basics, a bit more raw. Uh, and I found this part really, really easy. And so far, I've only used about 10 hours worth of fuel to go 100 miles. Uh, so that's pretty good fuel economy by any standards, let alone by something like this. I mean, personally, of all places I expected to be driving a catering down, a dirt track wasn't one of them, but uh, welcome to day two, where I'm green laning a Caterham 270S, yeah. This is mainly motorway, and I'll see you at the bit where we stop, basically, prior to the gig. This is kind of a two-stage travel, because it's a bit of a distance today, because we a bit of a break. Two hours, first leg. I made it. The journey was pretty easy going, even though there was a lot of traffic. But car parks, tight turning circles, this is an interesting one to uh, get in a multi story, to say that much. And reversing it into the doors open maybe wasn't my uh, brightest idea. It's a little later on. Uh, and in between this filming kind of stuff, I didn't want to make sure that you had to see more driving. Just thought I'd get you to the gig part of the day. Uh, in between what you've last seen and now, I actually filled up. I've averaged 35 miles to the gallon, which considering I've had some fun on back roads, uh, equally I've been sat on motorway speeds, if I had decided to drive at 60 constantly, then perhaps it would have been a little bit better, but it's pretty good and generally it's been really comfortable and relatively capable. Uh, I've driven it all sorts of off-road for the last couple of days. Somewhere this shouldn't go and realistically with the limited ground clearance it should struggle, but it hasn't. So the only bit I'm anticipating now is a drive home. Otherwise, as a daily driver goes, I'll have an update for you at the end of the day. This is the final leg at 100 odd miles or so, a couple of hours worth of driving. Um, I've got a full tank of petrol from earlier, so Let's see how we go. Uh, driving at night, I'm not sure what the headlights are like, what the comfort's gonna be like, it's getting quite cold outside, so let's go. Okay, so the end of two days of solid driving on the road, about 430 miles, roughly something like that, and a tank and a bit of uh, fuel at the very least. It was actually surprisingly comfortable, easy to drive, everything was within reach, but you had to plan for it. You had to make sure you had things like earplugs, you had to make sure that you had music to listen to, um, and you had to plan a little bit, but you could park it within reason, anywhere. It didn't struggle even when it needed to go down dirt tracks, and as a daily point of view goes, there's plenty of rim back here. On this run back here, it was very cold. Um, the heat is brilliant. If anything, I actually had the uh, the mixer adjustment to the extent that it was mainly cold air, but only a bit of heat because the heat is properly, properly warm. Uh, from a daily point of view, from a gigging point of view, this succeeded, and it's such a cool car to just daily drive. When you get inside the 270S, the Buffalo leather, big option, thousand pound option, but essential, very comfortable leather seats. It's nice to have a catering without having a four point safety harness. And to be fair, the interior space isn't actually all that restricted. Whilst it is very small, the steering wheel is tiny. You do actually feel very snug and very comfortable inside this. Uh, visibility, obviously, is actually quite good. Although the wing mirrors, except the center mirror, are pretty useless. As a result, what you'll end up doing is kind of ignoring them and just turning your head. But as a result though, the visibility is very, very, very good. When it comes to storage compartments, well, there's a fair bit of space behind you. Fair bit, to be fair. And up front, if you don't have a passenger, you've got plenty of space. I was more than able to fit my base, pedal board, overnight bag, camera bag, and various other bits and bobs uh, in the passenger side of the vehicle without question. The only thing that has to cross your mind if you daily one of these is 
is the security of the items that you've got inside because within reason, they're not all that secure. That said, people don't tend to muck around with these, especially if you park them in really obvious places. From a daily point of view on the inside, around town at least, the sound, sound level isn't too bad. It is quite noisy when you're on the motorway though. So if you do spend a lot of time on the motorway, bear that in mind. Make sure you've got earplugs, make sure you've got headphones. Because aside from that point, it is very cozy. With the roof on, it is so snug inside. It's really, it's like a cozy, warm, small place. It is just so lovely to be inside. And even on a night drive back with the headlights, they're okay, let's be honest. But they're not as good as some of the upgraded Xenon headlights you can get on these. Even with them like that, um, it's not precarious to drive at night and you do feel quite safe, especially considering how low down you are. Performance wise, this, as I said earlier, is a 1.6 litre Ford motor, produces 135 brake horsepower, 165 newton meters of torque, which means 250 brake horsepower per tonne. It means 60 gets, well, you'll get to 60. In five seconds, you'll top out 122. However, to do 122 in a car like this, you have to have massive cojones because this is a seriously jerky ride at high speeds. However, when it comes to performance, it is fantastic. Back road fun like you've never had. Pedal feel that's unassisted. You feel what's going on. You feel every inch of this car. While the steering wheel is quite small, the amount of turn that you have to, or the amount of input that you have to put in to result in the turn of the wheels, is quite minimal. So you do have minimal input to put in. Uh, so on back roads, you're barely moving your arms. You're working your way through the gears. The gearbox, by the way, very nice five-speed manual box. Thoroughly enjoy driving with it. Very, very easy and composed to drive. In the wet, this is where I criticize things like the 360 and the 420, and obviously the 620 is probably even worse. This is very, very dailyable. Even in the rain, even in the cold, even with semi-slick tires, this isn't such a handful that you can't daily it. And with the heater, an option, but the heater being on, you are very cozy, even right now, the roof off. Now, a big thing that I've mentioned continually with this car is performance. Now, seeing as I'm in Mexico, obviously, I think it's about time I demonstrate the performance side of this car. I think it's fair to say it's got a lot of get up and go. Um, so whilst this could be comparable to something like a Golf R, within reason this feels quicker and I've put it up against the Golf R traffic light to traffic light, it does beat it. Only in the dry though, in the wet, I can't imagine it would. However, off the mark, you will walk over a lot, a lot, a lot of things that should be on paper a lot quicker because this car weighs nothing, 565 kilograms. It basically weighs four of me. Actually, no less than that probably three of me because I'm getting fatter by the day. So from the outside, it looks fantastic. It's a real eye catcher, allows you to get away with cheeky things that people wouldn't normally let you get away with. In actual fact, the biggest thing I've noticed is that at junctions, people just let you out. Even if you don't have right of way, they go, hey, you're driving a weird car, I want to look at it. Out you come in front of me. From the inside point of view, it is quite comfy and it isn't bone breaking. You don't feel like you're breaking your back when you're driving it from a daily point of view. I've driven this for five days solid and my back's all right. So, so far, good, good. Although you might not have audio, I'm sure you could put your own Beats sound system in there or a Bose sound system with uh, some nice sound, whatever they call it, like the Beats pill, something like that. And from a performance point of view, it's capable around town, surprisingly, though it does have a habit in heavy, heavy traffic of overheating a little bit. But the visibility is good, the performance is quick at the lights. Through Galaxy, I will touch on this briefly, uh, on a run you'll see up to about 38 miles per gallon combined, you'll see about 35, and just around town you'll see over 30 though, about 32, 33. It is a decent fuel economy considering the power returns that you are getting. Um, if you were really, really lucky and you drove super frugally and you didn't hit any traffic, you drove at 60 miles an hour, you are very, very likely to see up to 42, 43 miles per gallon, but expect less. This is a performance car. You, This is miles per gallon rather than miles per gallon. The performance aspect of this is just so much fun considering it's so capable. I took it down off-road tracks where it really, really shouldn't have gone and it managed it. 
I took it near beaches, I took it on road trips, I did all sorts of stuff with it, and from a daily point of view, it just did it. The only thing that started to struggle was my ears, because the exhaust is right here. That was the most difficult thing I struggled with, um, only because of the motorway at about 70 miles an hour, you're over 3,000 RPM. It's quite a loud exhaust. But what a fun way to drive to work every day. Go shopping, probably not pick up your kids, because there's no ISOFIX, and I don't really think you'll want to put your kids in it. Not because it's unsafe, just because where you can put the baby seat. And in the weekend, you just say, hey, I'm going for a back road jaunt, or I'm going on a track day, and you can just have an absolute whale of a time. I've spoken to owners who drive these in the snow. I've spoken to owners who drive caterings every single day of the week, no matter what, no matter where, no matter when, they won't drive anything else. And when I drive something like this, the 270S, I totally see why. So my summary of the 2019, although this doesn't really change year by year, but 2019 Caterham 270S as a daily, really good fun. As a weekend toy, perfect. To carry stuff, not the best, not the worst. It's very capable, it sounds great. I say it sounds great as I'm going past this. And it gives smiles per gallon like almost no other vehicle on the road can give you. Thank you.